The planet Earth has gifted us with an immense variety of unique living creatures, and the pinnacle of this creation is us humans. However, our uniqueness lies not in our size, but in our intelligence. In this video, we will delve into the world of the largest beings that once inhabited our planet. Brace yourselves, as some of these creatures are bound to astonish you. We'll start by discussing the largest living creature on Earth today, the blue whale. With a length reaching up to 33 meters and a weight exceeding 150 tons, the blue whale is truly a marine giant. Unlike many other sea dwellers, the blue whale lacks large teeth. Instead, it possesses rows of baleen plates hanging from its upper jaw, known as whalebone, which it uses to filter tiny fish from the water. While the blue whale roams our oceans today, millions of years ago, much more intriguing and attention-grabbing creatures inhabited the Earth. On land, there were colossal dinosaurs like the Argentinosaurus, with a length reaching 35 meters. Sporting an enormous neck and a lengthy tail, it was one of the largest dinosaurs ever to walk the Earth. Traveling back 30 million years ago, a time when all dinosaurs were extinct, we encounter the Parasaurotherium. Resembling a giant rhinoceros with hooves and ears, the tallest of these creatures could reach a height of 5 meters. Our journey will also unveil the largest sauropod dinosaur in the planet's history, the Diplodocus. With an average length of 27 meters, scientists believe the largest individuals could stretch up to 35 meters, with much of that length attributed to its neck and tail. Not confined to the land, colossal creatures also inhabited the skies. The Quetzalcoatlus soared high above the clouds, with an impressive wingspan of up to 12 meters. Presumably unable to survive the asteroid impact, it perished during that tumultuous period, with its diet primarily consisting of small dinosaurs or whatever fell from above. Beneath the waves, an array of gigantic monsters roamed. Among them were the mosasaurs, some of the largest marine reptiles, reaching lengths of up to 17 meters, surpassing even modern giants like the sperm whale. So fasten your seatbelts. This is Space Progress Channel, and we are traveled to ancient times. Let's start with the largest animal that inhabits our time. It is the blue whale. The blue whale is a marine mammal from the infraorder of cetaceans, belonging to the family of baleen whales within the parvada of Mysticetes. The blue whale is the largest modern animal and likely the second most massive of all animals that have ever existed on Earth as known at the moment. Its length can reach 33 meters, and its weight can significantly exceed 150 tons. The blue whale is a typical representative of baleen whales that feed on plankton. It has a well-developed baleen apparatus formed by plates of baleen. The blue whale primarily feeds on krill, occasionally larger shrimp, small fish, and cephalopods. There are three subspecies of the blue whale, the northern, southern, and pygmy whales, slightly differing in size and body structure. Sometimes, a fourth subspecies, the Indian blue whale, is distinguished. The first two subspecies tend to inhabit cold, circumpolar waters, while the third is mainly found in tropical seas. The lifestyle of all subspecies is practically the same. Whales usually stay alone, occasionally in small groups, and even in groups, they swim dispersedly. The historical range of the blue whale covered the entire world's oceans, but it is currently heavily fragmented. Compared to the lifestyles of many other cetaceans, the blue whale's way of life is insufficiently studied. There are different estimates regarding the lifespan of the blue whale, and this question is not fully clarified. In any case, it is considerable. According to various sources, the blue whale can live up to 90 years, and the oldest known specimen was 110 years old. According to some scientists, these figures need verification, but in any case, in well-studied blue whale populations, the lifespan is at least 50 years. The blue whale has an elongated, streamlined body. Its length-to-body thickness ratio is significantly greater than that of other baleen whales. 
The head is large, constituting about 27% of the body length. The rostrum is pointed, and the head, when viewed from above, has U-shaped outlines, appearing strongly flattened in profile. An interesting fact about all whales is their blowholes, through which they expel water. These blowholes are called spiracles. The spiracle, like in all baleen whales, is formed by both nostrils, in toothed whales only the left one, and appears as two narrow openings converging at the front end. In the blue whale, it is located at the back of the head. Upon exhaling, the blue whale releases a vertical column of water in the form of a narrow, expanding cone, reaching a height of up to 9 or even 10 meters. The blue whale is the largest of all cetaceans and simultaneously the largest animal on Earth. The enormous size of the blue whale, according to those who have seen it, leaves a strong impression. The maximum recorded length for males is 33 meters. However, giants measuring 30 meters and more among blue whales are still rare. The average size is somewhat smaller. In the Northern Hemisphere, 23 meters for males and 24 meters for females, and in the Southern Hemisphere, a meter larger. The blue whale has very poor eyesight. It also has a weak sense of smell and apparently almost no sense of taste. However, its hearing and sense of touch are excellently developed. Weak eyesight forces the blue whale to consume small food in the form of swarms of small fish rather than hunting large fish. The blue whale primarily uses vocal signals for communication with its conspecifics. They are evidently not utilized for echolocation. Sounds produced by the blue whale have an average frequency lower than that of other baleen whales, mainly in the range below 50 hertz, predominantly around 20 hertz, making them infrasound. Research by American specialists conducted in Antarctica showed that blue whales can exchange signals at distances up to 33 kilometers. Since the beginning of the 20th century, the population of the blue whale has rapidly declined due to uncontrolled hunting. Whalers were attracted to the enormous size of this animal's body, harvesting one whale yielded much more blubber and meat than any other cetacean. By the 1960s, the blue whale was virtually exterminated and teetered on the brink of complete extinction. By 1963, there were no more than 5,000 individuals. Currently, despite conservation measures, the blue whale remains very rare. Its total population does not exceed 10,000 individuals, and new conservation efforts are needed to maintain a stable population. The main threat to whales comes from anthropogenic factors manifested in the disruption of their usual way of life and the pollution of the seas. The slow natural reproduction of blue whales also significantly hampers the growth of their population. One species we certainly won't see anymore is the Argentinosaurus. Argentinosaurus is a genus of giant sauropod dinosaur that lived during the late Cretaceous period in what is now Argentina. Although it is only known from fragmentary remains, Argentinosaurus is one of the largest known land animals of all time, perhaps the largest, measuring up to 35 meters long and weighing more than 80 tons. It was a member of Titanosauria, the dominant group of sauropods during the Cretaceous. It is widely regarded by many paleontologists as the biggest dinosaur ever, and perhaps lengthwise, the longest animal ever, though both claims have no concrete evidence yet. To counter this problem, paleontologists can compare the known material with that of smaller related sauropods known from more complete remains. The more complete taxon can then be scaled up to match the dimensions of Argentinosaurus. Mass can be estimated from known relationships between certain bone measurements and body mass, or through determining the volume of models. The giant size of Argentinosaurus and other sauropods was likely made possible by a combination of factors. These include fast and energy-efficient feeding allowed for by the long neck and lack of mastication, fast growth and fast population recovery due to their many small offspring. Numerous herds of Argentinosaurus, like a steady river flow, traversed the rich plains of prehistoric Patagonia. During this process, they grazed on the foliage of the encountered trees, not hesitating to consume young branches as well. 
even pine needles and cones could disappear into the bottomless pits of their esophagus. The comb-like rows of teeth of the Argentinosaurus allowed them to grind plants to an acceptable level, and gastric stones, gastroliths, could play a role in their digestive system. Undoubtedly, this behemoth had its enemies. It could face attacks from large theropods, whose concentrations here were staggering. During the early Senonian period, groups of sharp-toothed Mapisauruses could hunt the Argentinosaurus. Round-headed Scorpiovenators might ambush small individuals from their hiding spots. After some time, even larger Carcharodontosaurids appeared in the area, gigantic theropods. Ecrixinatosaurus, specialists in hunting medium-sized dinosaurs, likely posed a lesser threat but could still attack opportunistically. On the shores of seemingly calm rivers, hungry crocodiles lay in wait for the Argentinosaurus, so any watering hole could conceal a threat. Finally, small, agile predators could stalk the hatchlings, recently hatched from their eggs. It is noteworthy that even a group of impressive gigantosaurs would have struggled to overcome a fully grown Argentinosaurus. Strikes with their tails or legs could easily injure any reckless hunter or simply crush them. Therefore, predators would preferentially attack very young, old, or sick Argentinosaurus. But colossal monsters inhabited not only the land and water, they also soared in the air. One such giant was Quetzalcoatlus. Quetzalcoatlus was one of the largest known members of the pterosaur order. The wingspan is not precisely known due to incomplete preservation of fossil remains, but based on the proportions of other species of pterosaurs, it is estimated to be approximately 12 meters. It was discovered in the Upper Cretaceous deposits of North America and lived about 70 million years ago. Initially, the wingspan was estimated at 15.9 meters, averaging the estimate through the proportions of other pterosaurs. However, during a 1981 study, the estimated size was reduced to 11, 12 meters. Assessments of the body mass of giant ashdarkids are extremely problematic since none of the existing species has a similar size or body structure and as a result, published results vary widely. The total weight, based on some studies, indicated that the weight of Quetzalcoatlus was around 200 to 250 kilograms. There was quite a bit of debate about the dietary preferences of Quetzalcoatlus. Ultimately, scientists concluded that Quetzalcoatlus literally ate what it saw. This huge flying monster could have been a scavenger, feeding on the remains of terrestrial predators and small animals. For example, it could scavenge the carcasses of sauropods, such as titanosaurs or alamosaurs. Also, due to its long neck vertebrae and toothless jaws, Quetzalcoatlus fed similarly to modern skim feeders, catching fish in flight and slicing through waves with its beak. Moreover, the most common version is that Quetzalcoatlus was also a terrestrial stalker, resembling modern storks, and it hunted small vertebrates on land or in small streams. Its ability to turn its head 180 degrees allowed it to better locate prey and avoid ambushes from enemies. Due to the large wing size, Quetzalcoatlus found it quite challenging to take off. It either took a long runway or used elevation to jump off and start gliding. According to some data, Quetzalcoatlus could reach speeds of about 80 kilometers per hour and glide at an altitude of four kilometers above the ground. This allowed it to observe everything happening on the ground and, in case of detecting prey, rapidly glide down towards its target. He is another enormous and incredibly large inhabitant of our planet. Meet the Mosasaur, not only known for its size, but also as one of the most fearsome predators on Earth. The Mosasaur, surpassing the modern sperm whale in size, had excellent vision aiding in hunting, although it possessed a relatively weak sense of smell. Moreover, it was the ancestor of monitor lizards and snakes, but unlike them, it was warm-blooded. These formidable predators were not afraid of battles, even with their own kind, as evidenced by the found injuries and fractures on fossils. Mosasaurs actively hunted various inhabitants of ancient seas, from sharks to turtles and even birds. 
The mosasaur was one of the largest marine reptiles, reaching lengths of up to 17 meters. This made it larger than contemporary giants like sperm whales. According to findings, the length of the mosasaur varied from 13 to 17 meters, placing it among the largest marine reptiles in history. The mosasaur possessed extremely powerful jaws and huge, sharp, conical teeth, perfectly adapted for killing and consuming large prey. Its teeth were slightly curved backward and had smooth, blade-like edges, capable of easily piercing, tearing, and biting through the flesh of its prey. The bite force of the mosasaur, according to different data, ranged from 15 to 20 tons per square centimeter, far surpassing the bite of any predator of that time. These powerful jaws allowed the mosasaur to instantly kill its prey by breaking their spine or biting through the skull. It could tear huge chunks of meat from the carcass and crush bones and shells to reach the internal organs of the prey. Thanks to this combination of powerful jaws and sharp teeth, the mosasaur could efficiently kill and consume even the largest marine reptiles and turtles. In addition, the bone structure and some metabolic features suggest that the mosasaur maintained a constant body temperature regardless of the ambient temperature. This is very unusual for reptiles, especially modern reptiles, most of which are poikilothermic animals. One specialist suggested that the mosasaur was a very fierce hunter, as evidenced by deep bite marks on the shields of the giant sea turtle Allopleuron. Most likely, this species hunted near the ocean's surface, ambushing prey and using its large eyes to more efficiently spot and catch victims. Chemical and structural data in the fossil remains of this turtle suggest that they could also hunt in deeper waters. Isotope studies of carbon in the remains of several mosasaur individuals showed very low carbon isotope values, indicating the animal's food source. Interestingly, there is currently one preserved stomach of a mosasaur known. This stomach was found in a well-preserved incomplete skeleton of a small Missouriensis, about two meters long, dating back approximately 75 million years. Inside, it were the remains of a meter-long fish with a torn body and pierced bones. This fish was much longer than the 66-centimeter skull of a small mosasaur, indicating that Missouriensis could swallow prey larger than the size of its head. Mosasaurs could teach their offspring to hunt. This is confirmed by a fossilized shell of a cephalopod mollusk, Argonauta, with bite marks from two mosasaurs, one young and one adult. Perhaps this is an example of teaching offspring that cephalopods are an alternative food source. Another explanation is that both bites belong to one mosasaur, which first lightly bit and then bit more forcefully. However, differences in the distance between the teeth suggest different jaw sizes. The mosasaur coexisted with other large predatory mosasaurs, which were also considered top predators. The most notable among them were the Tylosaurines and Prognathodon. Tylosaur bernardi, the only surviving species of this genus in the Maastrichtian, reached a length of up to 12.2 meters, while the largest coexisting species of Prognathodon, such as Saturator, exceeded 12 meters in length. Comparing carbon isotope values in the tooth remains of two species, namely Saturator and Hofna B, helps us understand whether they consumed the same food or lived in similar conditions. Scientists found that the average carbon residue values in the mosasaurs of different groups differed. This suggests that they likely fed in different places or consumed different types of food. Thus, mosasaurs shared resources and avoided direct competition. Additionally, the teeth of Saturator were more massive and adapted for hunting hard-shelled animals, such as turtles. On the other hand, Hoffmanni, with its teeth, could hunt a broader range of prey. This difference in tooth structure also indicates distinct dietary preferences. Mosasaurs fed on fish, which is a softer food source, helping them avoid competition for resources. However, they couldn't completely avoid conflicts, as there is evidence of aggressive encounters between mosasaurs and other large individuals. For instance, the skull of a young mosasaur with fractures from a powerful blow was discovered, suggesting an attack by a tylosaur with its elongated snout. 
Today, these giant reptiles may seem like monsters from the distant past. However, they were simply following the laws of nature to sustain themselves and continue their species. The next representative of massive animals on our planet existed not too long ago, the Indricotherium, also known as Paraceratherium. Indricotherium is the largest known terrestrial mammal that inhabited Asia during the Oligocene epoch approximately 30 million years ago. Paraceratherium is one of the largest known terrestrial mammals ever to exist, but its exact size is unclear due to the absence of complete specimens. The total length of its body was estimated to be 7.4 meters, and the weight of Paraceratherium was comparable to that of some extinct proboscideans. Its shoulder height was estimated as 5.25 meters at the shoulders by Granger and Gregory. The neck was estimated at 2 to 2.5 meters long. Weight of Paraceratherium estimates between 15 and 20 tons. Estimates have been based on skull, teeth, and limb bone measurements, but the known bone elements are represented by individuals of different sizes so all skeletal reconstructions are composite extrapolations, resulting in several weight ranges. There are no indications of the color and skin texture of the animal because no skin impressions or mummies are known. Most life restorations show the creature's skin as thick, folded, gray, and hairless, based on modern rhinoceroses. Because hair retains body heat, modern large mammals such as elephants and rhinoceroses are largely hairless. The largest skulls of Paraceratherium are around 1.3 meters. The bones above the nasal region are long, and the nasal incision goes far into the skull. This indicates that Paraceratherium had a prehensile upper lip similar to that of the black rhinoceros and the Indian rhinoceros, or a short proboscis, as in tapirs. Unlike those of most primitive rhinoceratoids, the front teeth of Paraceratherium were reduced to a single pair of incisors in either jaw, which were large and conical and have been described as tusks. The upper incisors pointed downwards, the lower ones were shorter and pointed forwards. The simple low-crowned teeth indicate that Paraceratherium was a browser with a diet consisting of relatively soft leaves and shrubs. Later, rhinoceroses were grazers with high-crowned teeth because their diets contained grit that quickly wore down their teeth. The reasons Paraceratherium and its relatives became extinct after surviving for about 11 million years are unknown, but it is unlikely that there was a single cause. Theories include that their large size was related to the now outdated concept of inadaptive evolution, climate change, vegetational change, and low reproduction rate. Current snakes instill fear in many people due to their venomous nature, capable of killing large creatures, including humans. However, in the past, our planet was home to a snake of incredible proportions, the Titanoboa. Titanoboa, translated as giant boa, is a genus of enormous fossil snakes belonging to the family Boidae, closely related to boas. It is the largest known snake in the history of the Earth, representing one of the most significant inhabitants of our planet at that time, approximately 61 million years ago, in what is now Colombia, during the Paleocene, nearly 4 million years after the last dinosaurs disappeared. Due to its size, lifestyle, and dietary habits, there is much debate among scientists. They could grow up to 12.8 meters, perhaps even 14.3 meters long, and reach a body mass of up to one ton. The discovery of Titanoboa sheriginensis supplanted the previous record holder, Gigantophus garstini, which is known from the Eocene of Egypt. Its vertebrae are very robust and wide, with a pentagonal shape in anterior view, as in other members of Boinae. Although originally thought to be an apex predator, the discovery of skull bones revealed that it was more than likely specialized in preying on fish. As for how Titanoboa could reach such colossal sizes, scientists have not yet found a definitive answer. Presumably, the climate during that time was much warmer than it is now, allowing Titanoboa to remain active without the need for extended sunbathing. The snake could stay active, consume a lot of food, and consequently gain muscle mass. 
Kitanoboa faced little competition for prey as it was the most dangerous predator of its time, even surpassing crocodiles. The name Titanoboa translates vividly as Titanic Boa. However, its hunting style differed significantly from modern boas. Titanoboa hunted more like crocodiles, hiding in murky water and patiently observing approaching prey. When the prey entered the striking range, the snake would make a sudden lunge, leaving the victim with no chance of escape. Titanoboa did not possess venom, and it had no need for it, as few predators dared to challenge it. However, the snake had competitors in its food niche. Crocodiles and large Carbonomies turtles hunted in the same areas, and the turtles, besides being herbivores, gladly consumed large fish. While Titanoboa might have been able to overcome crocodiles, the Carbonomies turtles were annoying neighbors. This species survived for about two million years and became extinct when it failed to adapt to a colder climate. Even this small snake required assistance for survival. Scientists speculate that the species could potentially return due to global warming. Fortunately, it would take millions of years for modern boas to reach such sizes. Not only animals could reach enormous sizes, some arthropods, such as arachnids, could grow up to two meters. The Eurypterida order of fossil arthropods from the Merostomata class of Chelicerates includes about 250 known species. Individual representatives reached lengths of more than two meters, although the typical size of most species did not exceed 20 centimeters. They existed throughout the Paleozoic era, 510 to 248 million years ago. Early forms inhabited shallow waters in seas. Around 325 to 299 million years ago, most of them transitioned to a freshwater lifestyle. The evolution of Eurypterids from an aquatic to a terrestrial lifestyle is well illustrated. Fossil evidence regarding the digestive system content of Eurypterids is lacking, so there is no direct evidence of their diet. The biology of Eurypterids primarily suggests a carnivorous lifestyle. Not only were many of them large, but they also had stereoscopic vision, the ability to perceive depth. The legs of many Eurypterids were covered with thin spines, used for both movement and food gathering. In some groups, these spiky appendages became highly specialized. Some Eurypterids from Carcinosomatoidea had forward-facing appendages that were large and featured extremely elongated spines, as seen in Myxopterus and Megalograptus. In derived representatives of Pterygosioidea, the appendages were completely devoid of spines, but instead had specialized claws. Other Eurypterids lacking these specialized appendages likely fed similarly to modern horseshoe crabs, grasping and triturating food with their appendages before pushing it into their mouths using chelicerae. As with many other extinct groups, the study of reproduction and sexual dimorphism in Eurypterids is challenging since they are only known from fossilized exoskeletons. Sometimes, visible differences are insufficient for recognizing genders. One of the most popular and easily recognizable dinosaurs was the Diplodocus. It is considered one of the largest lizards to have existed on our planet. Diplodocus lived during the Jurassic period of the Mesozoic era. The discovered remains of the lizard date back to 157.5-145 million years ago. The dinosaur inhabited the northwest of America, with fragments of Diplodocus skeletons most commonly found in the Morrison Formation. The first Diplodocus remains were discovered in 1877 in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. The found fragment of the mid-tail was of an unusual shape, featuring split char processes at the bottom of the vertebrae. It was thanks to this that the dinosaur received its name. Excavations continued for decades, yielding new fossils attributed to Diplodocus. The most complete skeleton found is considered to be the specimen of Diplodocus carnegi. The small head of the lizard, about 50 centimeters in length, housed a brain slightly larger than a chicken egg. Sharp, slender teeth grew at the front of the mouth. The nostrils of Diplodocus were not paired. The breathing opening was not at the tip of the snout, as in typical animal representatives, but in front of the eyes. 
The head was held on a long, thin neck that was parallel to the ground, with a length estimated between six to eight meters. The number of vertebrae ranged from 15. The neck bones in these dinosaurs were hollow. To balance the long neck Diplodocus, the tail was instrumental. It had 80 vertebrae, twice as many as earlier, and more massive sauropods. Apart from its balancing function against the neck, the tail could serve as a means of defense against enemies. The cavities in the vertebrae reduced the organ's weight and decreased the load on the musculoskeletal system. Processes on the vertebrae in the middle part of the tail likely served to support it and protect vessels from compression. The torso of Diplodocus was elongated, slightly widened towards the rear. The four limbs were pentadactyl and positioned perpendicular to the ground. For a long time, scientists believed that Diplodocus's limbs grew sideways, similar to a crocodile. This theory was later refuted through computer modeling. Short, sharp claws were present on the inner fingers. The front limbs were significantly shorter than the hind limbs. Modern data on the dimensions of Diplodocus were established in the 1910s. On average, its length was about 25 meters, and larger individuals could reach up to 30, 35 meters. Most of the length was attributed to the tail and neck. Regarding the dinosaur's mass, there is no unanimous agreement among scientists. Some estimate a weight fluctuating between 10, 20 tons, while others argue that Diplodocus is significantly heavier, with a mass reaching 80 tons. The height of the animal is another ambiguous question. According to some data, its height ranged from 4 to 6 meters. According to other estimates, Diplodocus's height could be within 10, 15 meters. Diplodocus was a herbivorous dinosaur. To sustain its enormous body with energy, the lizard consumed tons of vegetation daily. Some paleontologists claim that the animal couldn't reach high-growing leaves, so it fed on the lower and middle layers of vegetation. Others assert that due to its strong back muscles, Diplodocus could rise on its hind limbs to reach juicy greens from the tops of trees. The lizard's diet consisted of leaves and shoots of ferns, fruits of coniferous trees, algae, and small mollusks. To aid in the digestion of food, the dinosaur ingested gastroliths. Most likely, Diplodocus lived in herds and leisurely roamed through forests in search of fresh greens. They also foraged in shallow waters, feeding on aquatic vegetation and small fauna. There was no clear hierarchy in their groups. However, during movement, they walked in formation, with adults surrounding the juveniles to protect them from predator attacks. This peaceful creature avoided conflicts with its own kind and other species. The giant lizard instilled fear in carnivorous dinosaurs existing in the Jurassic period. However, predators often targeted Diplodocus offspring during hunts. Scientists haven't definitively determined the lifespan of Diplodocus. However, some paleontologists speculate that the average lifespan of the lizard was around 200 years. If you want to learn more about the giant dinosaurs that lived on our planet, subscribe to our channel. This was a Space Progress channel. See you again.